Hello and welcome to the Reviews Brothers. Music plays a big part in video games, don't you know? It can even make a game that isn't all that great feel like a better one just because you're jamming out to the music. And then there's some games that take it even further by having their very own theme song. Now I don't just mean a musical score or something like that, I mean a full blown song with lyrics and everything. So that's what we're looking at here, a handful of games that have got their very own intro song. Now this was a very fun video to make, so please make sure you let me know any more games that have their own songs in the comments below so I can make this into a mini series. And don't forget, if you want even more content, check out my Patreon and Instagram where there's even more reviews, podcasts, gaming challenges and more. Anyway, how about I shut up, you press that subscribe button and we take a look at some games. Clay Fighter for the Super Nintendo is a game that wanted to cash in on the Street Fighter 2 craze of the 90s, and is a one-on-one -on -one fighting game where a bunch of freaky circus uh, freaks all want to be the number one act in the circus, and of course the only way to do that is by having a fighting tournament. You get to choose from eight fighters, a clown, a snowman, Elvis impersonator, Viking opera lady, a blob of goo, some taffy, imaginatively named taffy, my favourite one, Ichabod Clay, who's a pumpkin ghost thing from a haunted house, and then you've got the not hilariously named Tiny, who's a great big guy. That's never been funny when people do that, has it? Gameplay here is pretty much what you'd expect from a Street Fighter knockoff. You've got three punch and three kick buttons, weak, medium and strong. Each fighter has their own attacks which tend to relate to their look, for example the clown throws custard pies, Helga sings loudly doing damage, Tiny the strongman does lots of grabbing, and so on. The moves are all done using Street Fighter style inputs, but the controls here aren't particularly responsive so I actually found that I didn't bother using a lot of the special moves most of the time and just stuck with doing normal attacks, and I still did pretty well. Though some characters are noticeably easier to use than others, and also the computer AI here is pretty damn tough. The graphics were a big talking point when this was released. As the name suggests, the characters are all made out of clay, which I actually quite like. The animation is pretty jerky though, and probably didn't help with the controls, but they do look good, and the roster here really does help the game stand out. It doesn't take itself seriously, and that's probably for the best. Overall though, I'd say this is a below average fighter. You can definitely have fun with it, but it's unlikely to be one you'll play more than a few times considering the other games available. However, that's not why we're here. We are here for intro songs, and Clay Fighter has a pretty catchy one. So, as I like to say, how about I shut up and we take a listen. Sorry. From the top.
Radical Rex is one of those mascot platform games that were all the rage in the 90s, taking an anthropomorphised animal, in this case a T-Rex, and giving it tood. The story here is that an evil wizard called Sethron, who also happens to be a human by the way, casts a spell to make dinosaurs evil, and Radical Rex, who was asleep when the spell was cast, was not affected by it. That means he's got to hunt down the evil wizard and kick his ass and undo the spell, and it also means that any other dinosaurs you meet along the way will be trying to kill you. Gameplay is your standard platforming fare here. You explore some quite large and often maze-like levels where your only goal is to get to the end. Thankfully, it's not one of those games that forces you to collect a certain amount of items before you can exit the level. Those are some of my least favourite types of games. But no, here you just have to get to the exit. But it's never that easy as there's plenty of obstacles and routes for you to navigate if you want to find it. Most of the time you'll be running and jumping and bouncing off things, but this is a 90s game, so there's also times where you'll ride a skateboard for absolutely no reason. But actually, these bits are actually quite fun. It is strange that there is literally no other references to modern times other than the skateboard, but actually that's not true, the bonus level was that you got a pogo stick. <laughs> Cowabunga, I guess. Levels will see you explore jungles, caves, the innards of another dinosaur, and even graveyards with skeleton dinos. Thankfully, you have a few ways to defend yourself from the dozens of enemies on each level. Firstly, you can breathe fire, like any self-respecting T-Rex did in dinosaur times. Only this doesn't kill enemies. Instead, after a few blasts, it will freeze them. Then you can use your ninja kick to finish them off. Why it's so convoluted, I'll never know. And if you want to just use your kick to kill enemies, well, you can go to hell, because you can't. You also have a sonic shout blast thing you can do. All of these are kind of useless, and you can run out of them if you're careless, but thankfully there's plenty of power-ups in the levels to help you get your powers back. It's also quite an easy game, actually, and you'll likely beat it after just two or three tries, and it can be done in about an hour or so, but that's not really a bad thing. This one isn't a bad game really, it is just painfully mediocre. The graphics are pretty decent with big sprites, though that can also be a problem as it means you don't see enemies till it's too late a lot of the time, and Rex's face is quite annoying as well. If you really need something to play that you haven't before, then this game is fine, but don't go out of your way to do so. Unless that is, you want to hear the awesome intro song, time for me to shut up again, and let's listen. Now here's the one you've probably all been waiting for, it's Donkey Kong 64, being shown here on the mighty Nintendo Wii U video game system, which is why it looks so crisp. Of course it was originally released for the Nintendo 64, in case you couldn't figure that part out. That bastard crocodilian K. Rule is back again and has stolen all of DK's golden bananas, as well as capturing most of the other Kongs. Bastard. So you set out on a huge 3D adventure where you'll need to rescue your buddies, collect your golden bananas and kick the K-Rap out of K-Rule once again. You've got a huge hub world to explore which gives you access to the game's various levels, each of which contain hundreds of things for you to collect, and man, I have to say, it really is a bit too much. The first few levels will see you rescuing the various other Kongs, and then on top of this, each Kong has five bananas on every level to collect, and they've also got a hundred small bananas to collect. And you can tell who each one is for, as they're all colour coded for different Kongs. So yellow stuff is for DK, red is for Diddy, and so on. There's various other items you can collect that you have to take to either Cranky, Funky, or Candy Kong, who will give you new moves, new weapons, and even instruments to play. It's never ending. And at first it seems great, but for me it just turned out to be too much, and this is a game that I've never completed, and I don't think I ever will. I did buy it when it was first released, well actually my brother bought it from Melbourne Airport on our way back from holiday in Australia once when it was first released. I think I bought Banjo-Tooie, how exciting. But even then, it was just too much. You have to swap characters quite often, and you can only do this in certain places. You'll spend half an hour or so exploring an area, only to realise you need to then be a different monkey and you've got to backtrack for ages to swap, and you've got to hope you remember your way back as well. It's very tedious, and I found it to be just a cheap way of padding the game out. Also, there's very few hints as to what you need to do to get the golden bananas. Now, you can talk to Wrinkly Kong, who is now a ghost, and she does give you some hints, but it doesn't help all that much. 
What also doesn't help is that the camera kind of sucks here, which is surprising considering that this came out after Banjo-Kazooie, which has a much better camera. The levels here are massive, but often quite cramped, and the camera is too close, making it hard to see what's around you. It all looks alright though, with some decent graphics and nice lighting. You do need the expansion pack for this game. I've heard that in theory you don't actually, but there's a bug in the game that they couldn't figure out how to fix without the use of the expansion pack, but I don't know if that's true or not. It's a shame, because this is a game that I really want to like. I would like a remake that fixed some of the tedious gameplay and maybe made the levels smaller, which sounds like an odd thing to say. I know this game has its fans, but I do also know there's lots of people that feel like me. It's a game that you want to like, but just can't. Kind of like how I feel with ukulele. But hey, again, that's not why we're here. It's because it has a theme song. Is it a good one? Well, that's for you to decide. Let's listen. Buck Bumble, also for the N64, is a third-person action game set in the future. It's the year 2010, and a chemical spill in London has mutated a bunch of insects. Several of these insects have started to work together and call themselves the Herd. They have a diabolical plan to take over the garden, and then the world. So you as Buck volunteer to join the resistance. You're kitted out with cybernetic implants and have to get out there and take down the Herd scum. As you're a bee, all the levels are flying levels, but rather than being an on-rails kind of thing like Star Fox, instead you're in some quite large sandbox levels where you have various objectives to complete and you can fly around freely. And you know what? It's actually a pretty fun game. Missions are varied, but have the usual objectives you'd expect in a game like this. You'll be shooting down enemies, destroying satellite dishes, and, well, not a whole lot else. Basically all missions involve flying around and blowing stuff up. 
You get a fair few weapons to do this. You've got a standard gun that has unlimited ammo. It's decent enough, but quite weak. But you'll soon pick up lasers, stun guns, rocket launchers, and more. You can switch between them all on the fly, or should I say on the B, and thankfully the controls are pretty smooth here, so flying, collecting items and attacking are all very easy to do. There are a fair few enemies and enemy types, all of which are bug based. There's wasps, beetles, dragonflies and so on, and they can be a pain in the ass to take down. Some are armoured and have specific weak spots, and others are just fast and hard to shoot. You are quite nimble though, and you can control your speed as well as do a few evasive manoeuvres which you'll want to get used to. Graphically, the game looks decent enough, it's very N64, and I'm playing it here on the real hardware. There is a fair bit of fog, and it can often be tricky to see what things in the distance are, so enemies can sneak up on you, and even in front of you, but overall, it doesn't look terrible. Thankfully, it runs pretty damn smoothly most of the time. There is slowdown every now and then, but it was never enough to ruin the experience. And yeah, the soundtrack here is excellent, with some really cool techno beats that play during gameplay, and of course it has another theme song that is pretty famous among the gaming community, as it's way better than it has any right to be. If you've got good speakers, I recommend cranking the volume for the next couple of minutes as we take a listen. What about now? It's time to rock with the bigger debug. Bumble. What about now? It's time to rock with the bigger debug. Bumble. Bump to the bump to the bump to the base. Bump to the bump to the bumble. Bump to the bump to the bump to the base. Bump to the bump to the bumble. Bump to the bump to the bump to the base. Bump to the bump to the bumble. Bump to the bump to the bump to the base. Bump to the bump to the bumble. Bump to the boot to the boot to the boot boot. Bump to the base to the base base base. Bump to the boot to the boot to the boot. Bump to the base to the base base base. Diabolic, the original Sin, is a really cool action point and click puzzle game that is pretty unique. The story starts with you as a woman called Eva locked in a prison cell, and when you're about to escape your captors come in and throw a dead body in with you. That body happens to be your friend and master thief and assassin, Diabolic. He's been killed. Then the game sets you back 72 hours and you play through the events leading up to his death so you can find out what happened. The story here actually really got me hooked, which as Belt Buckle Bill will likely tell you, is a very rare thing. But I'm actually a big fan of point and click style games and this one really did get me interested. As it's on the PS2 the controls are quite a bit different and in a good way. You move your character with the analog stick and when you're close enough to things that you can interact with they start to glow. You have some info in the top right of the screen that always tells you what each button does, which is very handy. So it's very easy to interact with things, pick up items, look at things and use the items that are in your inventory. And that's basically what the whole game is. You'll be walking around the environments, which take you all over the place, and you just have to interact with everything and try using all your items with all sorts of other things. What's good is that you can't waste items when you have them, so you never get completely stuck. However, this can mean that the game sometimes falls into the trap of that thing that a few point and click adventure games do, which is where you're stuck and rather than finding a logical answer to a puzzle, you just have to resort to trying every combination of item with every object you see and eventually something will work. After a while you do get used to the sorts of puzzles though and will be making an effort to use the correct items, inspecting objects and so on. Unlike some games of the sort, you can actually lose this one. There are a lot of guards and enemies in the game, a lot of which have to be snuck around, but sometimes you have to use a variety of your weapons on them, like your blowgun or sleeping grenades. When this happens, you'll need to complete a minigame to successfully kill or subdue the guard, and if you don't do it in time, you lose and gotta reload the area. There's other sections where you have what are essentially quick time events and minigames to do things like dodge or use your grappling hook, and these are always really well done. The game also does a good job of keeping you informed of what you need to do control wise which is nice. Something that really stands out with this one is its presentation which I really enjoy. 
I read that the game is based on a comic book and they really leaned into the comic book style here. Cutscenes are a mixture of FMV and comic strip style animations that work really well. The game also has a really cool intro with its own theme song which is really great. And the things like when you talk to people and how it's all handled is really engaging and makes you want to listen to what people have to say. One gripe I do have though is that none of the talking is skippable. So if you accidentally press the interact button with something you've already done, you sometimes have to sit through 5 or 10 seconds worth of talking and diabolic telling you the same thing over and over. Or if you talk to a person that has nothing new to say, you can't skip what they've already said. The voice acting is a very mixed bag. Diabolic, well actually it's pronounced diabolique I think, sounds pretty great. But some of the other characters sound like they've just got an intern to record a few voices. But then again, I grew up with Resident Evil, so I kind of like it. But anyway, we aren't here for gameplay, we're here for music. And this game has a really cool James Bond style theme that plays after the prologue that really sets the mood for the rest of the game. Check it out. Katamari Damacy is an awesome game that spawned a cult series that's still going today. There's a wacky story where your dad, who also happens to be the king of the cosmos, manages to fuck up the entire cosmos, erasing all sorts of planets and things, and being his son, you're tasked with taking your Katamari, which is basically a small sticky ball, and rolling things up with it in order to create new planets and stars. It's a super simple premise that is just so much fun to play. You do rolling in various real life locations like houses, shops, streets and so on. Before each level you're told what sort of planet you're trying to create, and therefore what sort of things you need to roll up. For example, if you want to create a hot planet, you'll need to make sure you're rolling up things that generate heat. That could be hot food, fire itself, ovens and so on. If you roll up things like ice cream, water and stuff like that, it'll affect your score in a bad way. So while you're likely to spend most of your time just rolling everything you see, if you really want to do well, you do actually have to pay attention to a slight degree. And each level has literally thousands of things for you to collect. The thing is, you start off very small, literally the size of a paperclip most of the time. But as you roll things up, you'll grow bigger and bigger until you can literally roll up entire cities. It's amazing. Levels do have a time limit, so you have to be quick as well. Completing levels with a certain score will let you go back and replay them without a time limit, which is always good fun. And the game is just so wacky. As you can see, the graphics are a deliberately simple style, but that is really great and it looks fantastic with some excellent colour and I love exploring the levels to see all the weird stuff in them and the strange things that you can find going on. It's also super addictive, seeing something you can't roll up just yet and being determined to come back a few minutes later when you're big enough to get it. When you start rolling up humans and animals, it's just so damn fun and actually very funny as well. The only thing that can be a bit of a pain are the controls, but it's actually kind of deliberate on the game's part. You use both analog sticks and you push both forwards at the same time to move forwards, pull them both back to go back, and you do one up and one down to turn either left or right and so on. It does only take a few minutes to get used to, but there's times where you do feel like it's not as responsive as it should be. But you'll be having so much fun that you won't care, and you'll always want to come back for more. 
Usually I only record about an hour's worth of footage for these videos per game, but I ended up with nearly three hours of footage for this one, I just couldn't stop. And I'd be daft if I didn't mention the music. Now we'll get to the theme song in just a second, but the rest of the music is really just brilliant. As far as I know, all the songs are specifically written for the game, and they're all over the top crazy Japanese style, I love it. As far as I'm concerned, there's two types of people in the world, those who like Katamari Damacy, and those that are wrong. And yes, it has a very charming intro song, so how about I shut up and we take a listen. And finally for today, here is Octodad, shown on the PlayStation 4, but I'm sure it's available everywhere else as well. This is one of those funny, crazy, physics-based games. You play as Octodad, who gets married and has a family with a human woman. You spend the whole game just doing normal family things like housework, feeding the kids, making coffee, doing the garden, going shopping and so on. But you've got to do your best to act normal and not let people know that you're actually an octopus in disguise. And it's a game that is actually really funny and will have you laughing out loud the first few times you play it. You always have an objective to complete, but for the most part, you're welcome to go around doing whatever you want in the area that you're in. And often that involves causing a lot of havoc thanks to the deliberately way everything is controlled. You use a combination of the analog sticks and shoulder buttons to move your tentacles and legs, and it's all deliberately wobbly, so nothing you do is precise. You'll be flailing around trying to do simple things, but all of that is part of the fun. Simple tasks are never simple, so doing something like filling a glass with milk for your kid will usually end up with you pouring most of it over her head, and it's great. It is a bit of a puzzle game as well, as you visit various locations around the town and will need to figure out how to complete your objectives, which might be as simple as finding an object, but it's hidden away and you'll need to use your octo skills to climb or slime your way to it. There's also a chef who does know you're an octopus, and he's hunting you down to make you into sushi. It often set traps for you and you'll need to escape and stop yourself from becoming a starter. As you can see, the game looks really cool, it's definitely not a AAA title, but the graphics style is really good with a cool cartoony look to everything and the world is full of things for you to interact with. Most of it is just for laughs or to piss around with, and that's why the game is so fun. It just lets you do what you want for the most part, and causing mayhem is always a laugh here. There's plenty of physics based things to do, and that's what most of the puzzles revolve around. And yep, it even has its own theme song, which is very catchy. So for the last time, how about I shut up, and we take a listen. So there you go, a bunch of games that have their very own theme song. What games should I include if I do a part 2 of this? There must be more out there and I'd love to take a look at some more in the future, so be sure to let me know in the comments below. 
And now, all that's left for me to say is thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Bunker! Win